welcome to the Audacious Freedom podcast, episode number six being re-recorded. The topic is safety and firearms training reflections. I'm your host, Didi Mendez. I'm a storyteller, a perpetual student of self-development, and an audacious life liver, among many other areas of expertise and interests. I'm most recently the founder of audaciousfreedom.com. I come to you, my listeners, with stories about what I learn, read, observe, and experience in the world today. I'm inspired by so many other storytellers, and I'm told I inspire others as well with my own stories. I was inspired to record today's podcast, again, originally recorded yesterday, because I want to share a story with you. Here's a little background first, and I know that it's not going to sound related to the intended topic, but bear with me, please. I hired a fashion consultant and stylist in 2015 to help me figure out my business casual wardrobe. And for those of you only on audio, I'm doing a finger quotes. Um, I needed to figure out my business casual wardrobe when I started working for Hewlett Packard. Up until that point, I'd only known sort of corporate dress code for companies that I had worked for, like PricewaterhouseCoopers, Merrill Lynch, and City Private Bank all in New York City for about 15 years. And I wore pants suits for a long time, then moved into sleeveless dresses with matching blazers or jackets. Um, they were uniforms and it didn't require much thought. And under the pants suits, I could wear like a little chemise or a top that added a little color, a little bit of Didi to my outfit. And with the dresses, I could add a little jewelry, maybe a long necklace or a bracelet or certain earrings. Um, but I wasn't sure what to do with this business casual. So I hired Jody. She was a friend of a friend. She is a friend of a friend. And she meant business when she came to our apartment and took inventory of all my clothing, shoes, and accessories. This isn't meant to be a story about my clothing fashion consultation, really. Let's just say that Jody showed me how to pair jeans with blazers and to layer dresses with belts and to dress like myself and to feel professional at the same time. Meanwhile, I learned more about Jody, the person, and her other talents. I guess when you're trying on clothes, outfit after outfit, and a bra and underwear in between outfits, you get to chatting. Turns out that not only is Jody amazing at fashion consultations and a fashion role model in her own everyday hair and makeup and clothing, she also teaches safety and firearms classes in about 10 states in and around the Washington, D.C. area and where we both live. Not only does she teach firearms and safety classes to the general public, Jody also teaches, and I think I have this right, FBI agents to teach firearms and safety classes to other FBI agents. Yeah, Jody's a fucking badass. So one evening a couple months ago, or maybe a month ago, I got this feeling that it was time. I texted Jody that I thought it would be good to learn how to handle a gun. Not because I feel unsafe in any way. No one is coming to get me. Our neighborhood is safe. Even at 4 a.m. when I have to take our little dog out, I feel safe. And that's actually the hour when the construction workers start to file in to the buildings across the street. Most of them are Hispanic and I greet them in Spanish. So they usually seem to be surprised to be greeted at all, let alone in Spanish. I see you, I wanna tell them. And they seem sweet. Plus, we've got the police department literally two blocks away. I see it while our dog is peeing and while I bend down to pick up his poop. Really, I feel totally safe in our suburban neighborhood, even though I've actually watched and heard more arrests right outside our windows than I ever did living in New York City for those 15 years. I even left my apartment doors unlocked in New York City. There were 24-7 doormen. And again, no one was and no one is out to get me. It just felt like it would be good to know how to handle a gun, maybe as a bucket list item, even though I don't actually have a bucket list. Maybe to learn to shoot for sport, for accuracy. I wasn't sure, but when I texted Jody that it was time, she was ready for me. It turned out she was teaching a safety and firearms class the next week, just a few miles away from our home and to a group of all women. So I signed up for the four hour class and turned up. 
I turned up wearing my favorite gold jeans, jeans I had bought many years before, with Jody, of course. Gold jeans, a loose fitting white tee, flip flops, and a loosely crocheted cream colored long sweater over top. The outfit seemed appropriate for the class. Casual and a little badass. When I walked into the hotel meeting room, Jody was in full swing, fingerprinting everyone, all fingers on both hands. On the table in front of us was a large envelope with the meeting agenda and training topics and a state of Utah application for concealed firearm permit. Wait a minute, we live in Virginia and I have no immediate or even long-term plans to go to Utah. Turns out there are four reasons why Virginians should get their Utah concealed carry permit. One, Virginia permits may not be valid out of state. Two, Utah permits are valid in 30 states. Three, Utah permits are easy to get. That is after I get my Virginia permit and the background check can be completed by mail. That's what the fingerprints are for, for the FBI. So not really that easy to get. And four, Congress is considering making permits valid nationwide. I'm not sure how I feel about this and I need to learn more. Anyway, those are the reasons we have the Utah permit applications in front of us. And it's why we have our fingerprints on our FBI applicant card, which is to be sent in the Utah, app Utah application. I am overwhelmed before we even start the four hour course. And I trust Jody. I know she knows what she's doing. And this evening in this hotel conference room, just a few miles from Washington, Dallas airport outside of Washington, DC, I'm sitting in a room of probably just about 10 women who I don't know. I hear one of them talking about a restraining order for an ex-husband or boyfriend. I breathe a sigh of relief that in these four hours in this conference room, we are not going to handle any weapons, not even training weapons. I'm an empath, but I can't really in this moment process what it must be like for this woman to need a restraining order and who may feel like she needs this course and to get her Utah concealed firearm permit and maybe a Virginia one if that's where she lives, potentially for self-defense. I'm here for my non-existent bucket list, maybe for sport, maybe to show my 11-year-old daughter that her mom is capable of many things. I do take the content of this course very seriously though, and I love Jody's approach that the last thing you want to ever have to do though is fire your gun in self-defense. I leave the class at 9.30 that evening. At the time, I would normally be going to bed. Now I still have to get home, check on my daughter, take our dog out for one last pee, maybe poop, and get to bed before my 4 or 5 a.m. wake up from the same dog the next morning. I'm overwhelmed by the form I'm still going to need to find online for my Virginia permit, where I'm going to need to go to file the permit and what documents I'll need to have with me. At this point, it's an administrative exercise that I will power through over the next couple of weeks. And before I know it, I received in the mail my Commonwealth of Virginia Circuit Court of Fairfax permit to carry a concealed handgun. And I've never held a gun, let alone fired one. The shit was starting to get a little real, so I put the permit on top of my file cabinet. About a week later, I texted Jody to schedule time with her at the range. That was a week ago yesterday when I originally recorded this. So Monday, June 28th. So we went to the range on June 21st, 2021. I knew to wear closed toed shoes, no heels, and a closed shirt because hot cases can fall down your shirt. And I was nervous about my first time going to a range, an indoor range. And I arrived right on time, provided my driver's license and paid my fee be before being shown into a room to watch a 10 minute safety video. It was what I had already learned from Jody's class, though I respected that the range required it for all first timers. And I really appreciated that both the Virginia and the Utah permit applications required completion of a four hour safety and firearms course. Thank God and good on Virginia and Utah. Now, definitely all states do not require the course, a background check, or a permit to carry a concealed handgun within their bodies. What the fuck? I'm just starting to get my head around the state laws and lack thereof relating to 
gotten permits. So here I am. I've watched the 10 minute safety video as three young-ish men walk in to watch the video after me. I notice they are very polite to me and they seem sort of laid back. I think one of them was white, one appeared to be Asian, and the third man was black. They seemed chill and quite and yet respectful of the process to watch the video before going to the range. I had been paying attention to the energy of the lobby of the people working here and of the few patients passing through the expansive lobby area. Everyone was white and most were men, though at least one woman was working there. Mind you, I want to mention that this in indoor range is in Manassas, Virginia, about 30 miles outside of Washington, D.C. Manassas is known for the Manassas National Battlefield Park, the site of two major civil war battles. I half expected to see Confederate flags as I drove south and a little west from where we live near Dulles Airport and into the parking lot of the range and expected to maybe see in the windows of the cars parked there, Confederate flags. I didn't see any. This is the South technically, and while I live in Northern Virginia, three miles out from Dulles and about 20 miles north and a little east of Manassas, I feel like I might have traveled into a different state altogether. Jody put ear protection on me and led the way into the range itself, pulling behind a duffel bag on wheels with her gear, bullets and guns. I don't know how to describe the adrenaline I felt as we went through the first door toward the range. I could hear gunfire. I've heard gunfire. Gunfire, live gunfire for the first time in my life. Yeah, I've heard guns. And I've watched guns on TV shows and in movies for as long as I can remember. Even in comedy movies, there are guns. We are desensitized to violence on TV and in movies because we see it so often. I was not desensitized as I walked into the range. I was hypersensitized, if that's a word. When we walked through the second door, being careful to close behind us the first door, I saw a few empty lanes and felt and saw and heard the shots being fired by clusters of white men in groups of two and three. Hot cases were flying at their feet and in front of them. And beside them, their targets were riddled with holes. The sound of all the bullets was so loud with very little relief in between. My adrenaline was through the roof and I breathed and willed myself to be calm and to pay attention to everything Jody was showing me and telling me. It was near impossible to think about anything else than what was hap now happening in the lane next to us on our left. Fortunately, on our right was a solid wall. Hot cases were flying everywhere. Shots were being fired next to us using large bullets and some kind of rifles or long guns. I don't know the technical names for everything. There was a man who appeared to be my age-ish in his 50s and another man in his 40s and two young kids, presumably the sons of these two men. One maybe was in his teens and the other around my daughter's age, 11. I was so distracted by all of their movements immediately to our left and diagonally behind us. There were so many guns and so many bullets and the sounds of the shots over and over again. I couldn't help but think about this is what the victims and survivors of Pulse and Sandy Hook and Parkland must have heard. So loud, nonstop and sickening. Each shot caused my body to jerk and vibrated from my core throughout my body. It was beyond unsettling. I take very seriously anything that can name or kill a human being or an animal. The only thing I've had regular access to throughout my life that could name or kill a human or an animal is my car. And I feel, I feel and respect its power. I don't drive over the speed limit in excess and I follow the rules of stopping for stoplights and for stop signs. When I drive up or down I-95, I keep up with traffic even if that means driving 80 or 85 miles an hour, I feel the adrenaline of the power and the speed and have a knot in my stomach and dryness in my throat the whole time, still. And I've been driving for almost 40 years. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. I won't ever become desensitized to the power of my vehicle, especially at high speeds. Now, 
Here I am learning to load and shoot a gun with all this horrible death and naming around me. Every bullet could hit at least one human, could injure them or kill them. I look at the targets and the majority of the bullet holes are far from bullseye. It seems to be an exercise in shooting the most bullets, not in shooting them well. Is this how one plays video games with guns? Do you get more points for volume than accuracy? Meanwhile, over the course of the 45 minutes or so, with Jody's instruction, I learned to pick up a handgun with my finger not on the trigger and with my small hand, right hand. I think then I was to check to see if there was a bullet. If no, fill the clip with one bullet, one bullet. And I'm sure I'm not getting all the terminology right here. This is my memory of the anatomy of a gun and its safety that I learned in a four hour class about a, a month after the fact. And now I'm talking to you a week after my 45 minutes with Jody on the range, on the battlefield, in the war zone, in a mass shooting. It felt like those were the conditions in which I first held a gun and loaded it and fired it. Parts of me wanted to say, I'm out of here. Let's figure out another way for me to learn this in quiet, in private, calmly, nonviolently. I stuck it out because I trust Jody. I listened to her. Every step of her instruction, I looked into her eyes. I loaded the clip, brought the sights into focus, kept my feet shoulder width apart, leaned a little forward, put my chin up a little, squeezed my palms together, kept my thumbs loose, straightened and tightened my arms and shoulders and pulled the trigger almost all the way. I took deep breaths until I had the shot and fired. I tried not to look at the target until I brought my arms back in. I went through these steps about eight times and with every shot, and with every flash of light, I didn't like it. I did like seeing that every shot hit the paper plates we used as targets with an orange bullseye in the middle. I liked that all the shots were within a few inches of bullseye and one shot even hit bullseye. And the reason they didn't all hit closer, Jody explained, had to do with my trifocals and them allowing me to focus on the target instead of the sights. The shots got better when I borrowed a couple of different readers from Jody, and I just kept following every detail of her instructions. For my eight bullets in 45 minutes, the guys next to me must have shot hundreds of bullets each. I didn't, and I don't get it. I choke up now thinking about all the possible injuries and deaths their bullets could have caused. I think about my eight, I think about that woman in my firearms and safety class who had to take out a restraining order on her ex. I think about a friend of mine in Florida who feels unsafe because people know, the wrong people know, she lives alone. She loads her gun every night before bed and she's ready just in case. A quick Google search tells me that 4.5 million women in the United States have been threatened with a gun and nearly 1 million women have been shot or shot at by an intimate partner. Over half of all intimate partner homicides are committed with guns. Indeed, a woman is five times more likely to be murdered when her abuser has access to a gun. So I understand restraining orders and protecting yourself as a woman by taking a firearms and safety class and buying a gun. I'm so happy we women have these choices to make. I'm not happy about violence against women, against innocent people, people of color, any people. I'm sickened by mass shootings in the US and I don't have it in me now to do another Google search. Right now, I'm grateful for Jody, for all of her talents and for being an example to all women and girls. They broke the mold and they made Jody, that's for sure. And so I was thinking about why did I have to re-record this? Why was I on mute? Um, I guess I was on mute because when I went to play back what I recorded last night, I don't hear the audio with another, I hear the audio in other uh, recordings that I've made. So I think number one, maybe the universe just really wanted me to stick to my guns, no pun intended, on how powerfully I reacted to this and how much I stand behind my words of the story. Um, also, coincidentally, when I 
chose my outfit for day for today, which I don't always choose an outfit early in the morning, um, unless like I know I'm going somewhere special or something. And anyway, with summer clothes, it tends to be kind of easy and quick. But this morning, I had the time and I wasn't doing strength training. So I thought, you know, it's still dark out, I, I can't go for a walk yet. And I thought, let me just go ahead and pull my outfit. And I think it's a tribute to Jody because um, subliminally, subliminally, because while it's not something that I chose with Jody, um, I think the theme fits fashion and firearms and safety training and going to the range because it happens to be a camo um, print t-shirt dress, which is fabulously soft and comfortable um, with pockets and it's uh, got this sort of fleece lining and uh, anyway, I think the whole thing was meant to come together as it did. This has been Didi Mendez with Audacious Freedom, the podcast. Thank you for listening and I can't wait for next time.